established communications. Priority Alpha. I'm Walter Day, the father of esports, and you're watching Maddie Mo's Arcade. And you know how long it's been? I've stuck way back. I'm getting ready to attack. Fanny pack attached. Tokens are all stacked, got the mallet in my grasp Waiting for the moles, ha, hiding in their holes Score we're keeping tally, I'll be playing till they close now Can't nobody beat my high score You can't beat my high score Can't nobody beat my high score You can't beat my high score I'm a mallet master, a single fisted blaster You can ask my baby Start slow, then gets faster. I'm a record set or my To start off this repair, we wanted to go all the way through all the caps. Uh, this monitor was known to have cheap cap capacitors put on at the factory, and it was a first for Wells Gardner. Usually they're pretty trustworthy. Uh, I did notice that it had been recapped before. None of these caps were original, so they're better than what it would have came with normally. Uh, but I did go through all of them, and I replaced any that were faulty. I tested each one, put it back in if it was good. Uh, I, I went basically if it was 5 or 10 percent, you know, close to the value it was supposed to be, I left it in. And if it was underneath that, I just changed it. I, I wanted to be totally sure. And usually uh, I give a little bit more leeway than that. Um, so uh, aside from just doing caps, I also went through and, and was just testing parts in the area. I tested, first I want to test the fuse, which is right here. This is where your AC comes in. Fuse is going to be right behind that. And this is a degauss line here. Um, there's also another degauss on the neck board. And one will come from each side of the monitor. So I tested the fuse. The fuse was good. And then I wanted to test the hot, which is actually here on the side right here and I'll read it off to you it is at Q418 and oh no yeah that's right it is a 2SC5144 is the hot for this so this is going to be oh, that's awesome this is going to be the front of the chassis or this is going to be, if you're looking at the back of the monitor, this is what's going to be towards you. The neck board's going to be right here in the frame. And we'll hook this up together and I'll show you. Um, so I tested that, tested the hot. Both were good. So that's a good indication that the flyback is probably good. So again, I went through just some parts in uh, the shutdown area. I didn't really, really wasn't troubleshooting it yet. I just wanted to see what it did without it, with the cap kit and stuff. But I did test uh, this guy right here. It is Q427, and it is an IRF630B. That was bad, and uh, I think that was all that I, I found bad, just preliminary. And I'm not sure why I ended up testing that one. I think maybe it had cold solder joints. There, there was a reason other than troubleshooting that I checked that. But... After I did all this, then I went ahead and plugged it up to the tube and tried that. So I think I have a clip of that, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, I was wrong. I don't have a clip of that. I forgot I didn't record that. I was running out of time that day. So what happened that day, I, and I do have a little clip of me being excited when this originally happened. Um, I hooked it all up, and there were two caps that I had at 400 volt instead of 450 volt. And one of them was one of these guys back here. Maybe it was back here. Um, regardless, there was two of them. Um, and I should have that written down. I don't have it handy here. But it doesn't matter. Oh, here it is. They were 4.7 UF, 450 volt. You shouldn't have this problem. I just didn't have any 450 volt on hand, I don't think. And so I figured it would, that was close enough. Wrong. Never go down. Always go up. I know better than that. Um, I'm not sure if that was a lapse of judgment or if I actually made a mistake there. But regardless, it uh, fired up. It did sound like I, I wouldn't say that I got high voltage, but it did sound like the monitor came on and there was a huge scream, whine, and then the cat blew from the back. And like I said, there were two of those. So I went ahead and changed those out. And then I test, no, let's see. I got all my parts in for uh, testing it. Uh, uh, testing parts for the high voltage shutdown. 
Now, uh, some of the chips I wasn't able to test as I don't have an IC tester yet. Um, it's on the way, but I just they're they're cheap parts, so I just went ahead and changed them anyway. One of them is this guy here, which is IC401. Go ahead and zoom in. Let's see if I can. This little guy right, whoop, right here, with the uh, four legs on each side, and that is a UC three eight four two N or A N, and whatever you can get that's closest to that. And then another part. So let's flip us around here to the back side. The other two parts are back here in the corner. Now, you, there are lots of steps you want to do. There, there's a, a troubleshooting guide. Um, you want to check for resistors that are open in that high voltage area. And there, this is one of them here. This is where you're, you're going to measure the B plus or where I did. There's probably multiple places. I'll show you where it's at. This is now. This is going to be the side closest to the tube. I uh, I was grabbing off of here and then the grounding off the chassis. Now, when I first tried, I got absolutely nothing, and I reached for my monitor, which was hooked to here, and I bumped this or I bumped something in through here or the whole chassis in general, and it kind of fired up and scared me. So, I kind of just went over and uh, reflowed the solder to, to fix that. And the other two parts that I changed are right here by this transformer. One of them is this little chip that's back here. That is, let me see, I have it written down over here. And it's IC805. It's a CNY17-3 is what it's supposed to be. I have a dash two. Uh, I think that's fine. And then I also found a, well, this guy, IC806, also needs to be changed. And let me see, I have that written down. Let's see, I think I don't. Okay, so let me just see if I can see what it is real fast. It's one of these little guys. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it. He's right here hiding this guy right there there you go you can see him and let me read that off so you can see what it is if you need to change it it is a k a four three one a z and those are pretty cheap i think it's like 10 20 cents something like that so i got a bunch of those those were the the main culprits for um shutdown so I have my, whoops, too, zoomed in a little far. So I have my notes here. Shut down IC401, IC805, IC806. Those are those three parts there. And then I also, just because I had the chassis at home and I didn't have a way to test it, but I had extra time, I just kind of went through other parts in this area and I found a diode that was right here. I'll zoom in again. See if I can get any light over here. Right there. It's not a typical diode that looks black. It's one of those glass beaded ones. And I'll tell you what the value on that was. Just a second. Let me turn this light off. I'm already killing the battery on it. Okay, and so that was. I know I had that right, written down here. That was D805, and that was 1N4148 on that one. And then I was ready to test it again, so I got everything all back together. Got this put in here. Um, I was confused on how to hook up the neck board because there are a few spots that you can plug in. Multiple things will fit there. So I'll go through that, too, in this video. Um, so then we are ready to test it for the next time. This one I do have video of, and again, once again, the monitor scared me. Um, I did a a mod on this where you change one of the capacitors, and I uh, I think it is 
C810, you change it to a 270 UF 35 volt. That delays the startup. That helps with uh, bringing that on-screen menu. It's got some uh, some kind of an on-screen menu problem where it changes sinks and gets stuck and stuff. Well, that's supposed to help that. I forgot that I did that, and so when I turned it on, I thought it was dead. And then 30 seconds later, it fired up and scared the crap out of me. Well, let's go ahead and watch that clip. This is the 9200. Uh, it's has a horrible reputation. They say it's one of the hardest monitors to work on. I don't know about all that. We're about to find out. We got every part I want to get on here on here. And I tested a bunch of other ones at all. Either tested good or placed them. But I've got it where I want it. Last time uh, we had this and we fired it up. I was missing a couple parts I couldn't find online. But I do have them on there now. But it ended up trying to fire up and then squealed and blew a cap. So... It started to work. It wasn't shut down. So, fire in a hole. Here we go. Yeah, it's not I sure didn't hear anything. So, I'm going to hook up the... I just heard something. That was kind of scary, actually. It's right, it might be on. It's making a really high pitch squeal. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some testing first, but I think it's on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna clear this up a little bit. So here are my notes. And here was a tech message. Uh, if you have no uh, no signal message that pops up on the screen, uh, LW105, P502, I think those are connectors actually, um, and it says change C810 to 270 UF 35 volt, and that delays the startup. So I should have known it was going to do that. I mean, that was proper. <laughs> That's what I wanted it to do. It just really scared me. I, didn't think, I thought it was dead, and I didn't expect it to do that. Now... Aside from that, I turned it off because it had a really high-pitched whine, and the flyback was turned all the way up, so whoever was working on it last, trying to figure it out, probably turned up the brightness just to see if there was raster. So it should be okay. I think the whine should be gone, other than the whine from out there. So let's try it. Fingers crossed. Turn it. There it goes. She came on. Let's see if we got a picture now. Didn't like that. side of the monitor, but they've been shrapnel enough time past the belief. I just said we do have something going on on the screen. I'm a little excited. Where's my flashlight? Where's my flashlight? So, I thought it was going to explode on me. No, I don't see my flashlight. Oh, it is definitely a humming. Let me 
me check this out and make sure I have the video all hooked up correctly. I, I have a feeling the video is not hooked up correct. We'll be right back. This was my second problem after I got the chassis fixed and out of shutdown. The, uh, there was a hole in the flyback line here and there was no high voltage to the monitor I noticed. And this thing was not even connected inside the sheathing. So I am going to pull the Kmart fix and put this back together and see if it works for now. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend uh, keeping your monitor like this, but I just want to see if that's the problem. So be right back. Okay, this is third try, 9200. Found a hole in the flyback, not flyback itself, but in the, uh, I don't even know what you call it, the wire, the anode cup wire. So this could be dangerous, but I think I got it solved. Got it on delay, start, plugged in, right? Video plugged in. Okay, fire in the hole. No high voltage still. Let's see if it's got static this time. No static. I don't think that can fix it. I think it just keeps breaking in there. It's too brittle. I'm afraid to touch it. That should bring us up to current date, I think. Um, so now it seems that the monitor is working. There's just no high voltage. And you may have noticed in this, these few videos I've already shot how this flyback looks like this with all this taped up here. I'll show you either the pictures or I did a little video clip. There was actually a hole in the wiring and it had... I don't know if it melted the flyback, but basically there was a gap like this. And this part of the, the anode wire and this part were not touching at all. So I, I just kind of clipped out the center. I can't find any of these flybacks right, right now. I wouldn't recommend doing this because this wire is un, unshielded for a little bit. But it, at least it'll tell me if this is the problem. And I think, I think it'll be fine for at least a few minutes. And if this is one of my games, personally, I might roll with it until I could get one in the mail. But what I did was instead of you know, wrapping it real tight like this, I did it long ways and I put them together because it kept breaking. And then I, I put some uh, 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 copper wire around it, basically like a like a stent for a broken leg so that it was much stronger. And then, so now right here, I have a really strong joint rather than where it was before every time. So this, this uh, cable kind of wants to do its own thing. So whenever you go to put it, it's not ever what this joint wants it to do. So I think it's okay now. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up. We're gonna try it for this last time. Um, if this works, I'm gonna try to dial it in as fast as possible. Then we're going to call this one fixed, even though we know that it, it needs a new flyback because this isn't really going to fly on that flyback. So stick around and let's see if we got it fixed. Let's go over how the neck board hooks up. So this comes from your flyback. If you need to take that off to work on this or just get it out of the way while you're capping it, this yellow piece here just pops up. Once it pops up, this slides out. It's really easy to take out of there. This also comes from the flyback, just pops off right here. And then you have three connections down here. Um, this one is gonna come straight back. I do believe it runs power. Yep. And it's gonna come back, if I can separate it from the other ones. And it goes right here to the right. Not everybody's gonna have this little daughter board here. But it comes back over to this right side there's a plug then this left side over here it's gonna be hanging free for now this other one this one's to the right side the left side is gonna hook up to the little uh, video board and I'll show you that in a second and then this other one with the this one's easy because it has a big connector and it comes back here to the back oh uh, wait so that Okay, this right one comes all the way back to the back, back here, 
this one does not come off the chassis without desoldering it. And this one, this one I think cannot hook up anywhere else. So I don't think you'll have a problem with that. This one goes to the right over here behind this little board. And like I said, you won't all have that little board. Then the little one that goes to the video board, it also has a single wire that splits off here that comes to another connector back here. Now this third connector that's here, this is, uh, mine has red, green, and blue on it. It comes down, loops around, and also comes over to the video board, meets here, and meets your video signal from the game. And I will show you that now, and we will hook this up, and hopefully all is well. I don't know how this view is going to work out, but let's see where we're going to start. So I take this whole plate off. There's just four um, little screws on the bottom. You take those off, and you can slide the whole thing out. Of course, you're going to have to take your yoke wire off, your neck board off, and your degauss coil, which there's two of these. Um, so right now, to get this out of my way, I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. And hopefully that's fine. There's a lot, a lot of wiring going on on this monitor. It's kind of aggravating. It's one of my pet peeves, having wires all over the place. Okay, so... This one, I always think that it's turned too far. And it slides in. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's that. And... Here is the red, green, and blue wiring that I was telling you about. Let me see if, I can, if you can see what I'm talking about even. Okay, so let's, let's get a little look at this, better look at this. This is the little video board here, mounted to the frame. Um, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to go freestyle on this for just a second. So you can't get a really good view of that. So it looks, Am I zoomed in? Yeah, I am. Okay. It looks like this. I'm going to have my TPG hooked up here. Most games are probably going to be hooked here. Uh, it's, you know, I think that's the VGA. And most games that this monitor uses are newer and are going to be using that. It does have some hookups on the side over here. And that's where this guy is going to go. It's in this top one here. And then this one that I was telling you about earlier is going to get plugged in. Tuck her back over here. Get underneath here. I'm going to make sure that that uh, neck board is plugged in a lot better. But it's going to plug in. Let me see if I can get a view for you. Where'd it go? I dropped it. Where are we at? Okay, it goes on that. On this side, this is that far left connector on the neck board. I'm losing my light. Okay, so that goes there. Let's push this neck board back on there, make sure it's good. Okay, that's that part. I'm having issues here trying to have this tripod in my chair at the same time. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and slide the chassis all the way in, and we'll try to get this, uh, let's go over on this side, maybe this will work a little bit better. Let's try to get the yoke wires hooked up as we're getting it slid in here. Anything that's going to be a pain in the butt after it's pushed in and assembled, we want to go ahead and take care of that. So uh, we do have the remote board we have to plug in and that is also kind of in the middle of the chassis so are you kidding me what are we hooked on I'll rip your ass off of here Jesus Christ of course it would have to be something like that so let me resituate here the whole tube to fall off of here. What a pain in my ass. Tell you what. Okay. So this pain in the ass, 
course it gets plugged in way in the middle of the chassis like I was saying. And it plugs in right there. We don't want to do this when it's on. It won't work without it. It may come on, but we won't be able to see anything. It's flat line. Okay, and then next, oh, come on, camera. Here is the yoke wires. And they go right here. Basically, to hook those up, there's a there's gonna be one that's farther away from the other three. And so you just look and figure out which one which side has that one and plug it up. Now some monitors up those will be broken and flipped around. You might have to do a little research on those. And we got this side, it's going to go to the neck board. This is also degauss, degauss, everybody says it different. Degrassi, whatever it is. Okay, and then we have another one that's on the other side over here. And it just goes to the front like I was showing you earlier right next to the AC input. We actually can't reach it yet. Slip in here. And there is another little red white or red and black degauss wire there. It doesn't really fit the chassis and you don't need it. I don't I don't ever plug it in. Everything seems to be fine. And then we need to hook up the anode. We have tucked way down in here, all kinds of pinned up, all this awesome wiring that this fantastic monitor has. So hopefully we've protected that little uh, spot <laughs> It's broken. I don't know if this is going to work, but this is our only chance of fixing it at the moment because I can't find any 9200 flybacks. And I don't know when they're going to be back in stock. Normally I'd say go ahead and discharge this one more time, but this thing hasn't had any juice to it yet, so I know it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so we got that in. I think we're all installed. Just need to get our video. Not, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not 100% on this. But where I have the colored wires coming in here on the back of this thing, this is CGA and I have, uh, you know, my TPG is coming in on that same line. So that's why I have it over there. I think that's right. Not 100% sure on that, but we're going to find out as we go. So let me get this set up and plugged in and we will test it and see if we got it, gone, got it done or not. Unfortunately, I left my test pattern generator at home, so what we can do at the moment is turn it on and at least see if we have high voltage. We should hear it uh, crackle, should feel some static electricity on the front. If that happens, I know I've at least made it to the next step, and then tomorrow I'll remember to bring the TPG in, and we can dial in the picture. Hopefully, everything goes right. But here we go, firing a hole. Now remember... It does have a delayed start, so when I first flip the switch, we'll get nothing. By the time I get over to the camera, it should scare the crap out of me. And booyah! Okay. She did fire on. I did not hear any high voltage. Nothing. So, even if we had the TPG, we wouldn't have gotten anywhere. The only thing I can say is to go ahead and put a new flyback in it. I don't think it's in shutdown because the monitor is actually working. You can hear it running in the back. Um, yeah, and every now and then it tries to switch sinks looking for a signal. So I don't think it's in shutdown. And I guess I could test the B plus just to make sure everything is going fine on that end. I just don't think the power is getting from the flyback through to the anode cup. 
So this one will either be done. I'll have to talk to the customer if he wants to wait, or I'll, maybe I'll check again, see if we can find a flyback and get that ordered. Or maybe he's got another monitor we can steal one off of. But I hate to end it like this. So I'll kind of leave it up, up in the air for now. I'll talk to him and either come back tonight or uh, either way, I'll, I'll end this and, and let you know how, how we're going to go about dealing with this. But I do think the monitor works. And I think if we get a flyback in it, we just have to adjust the colors and maybe put in color transistors or something like that, depending on uh, how it looks. But, ugh, that's disappointing. All right, on to the next. Had a spare 9200 flyback brought to me, so now we are going to try one more time and see if we get high voltage. Okay, plug in the power. And we have everything but video signal. So I'm hoping it gets high voltage and we see a no signal message. Alright, here we go, fire and hold. Did I forget something? <laughs> okay, and let me look at this. Oh, I just heard static, and ba-bam, she came on, all right. Sorry, I turned the camera on a little late. So let's get back here and turn this brightness down a little bit. doesn't matter. Let's see if we have a menu. I don't know if we can see it. Oh, I wish I had my test pattern generator. Don't see the on-screen menu. He said it wouldn't pop up unless there was some kind of signal coming to it and it wasn't getting it. I'm not sure about that. But the problem that he brought it to me with is solved and that is high voltage shutdown and no picture. Just wish we could fix it all the way right now. But that part of it is fixed. And I do think I fixed it the first time. Uh, I tried it and the caps blew. I think it would have came on and everything would have been fixed then had I had a proper flyback but I will call that part of this one a success and if I get to update uh, I will update on the channel and I will link to this video thanks for watching so these two right here are gonna be ground and 5 volt so what do we get here did I not turn the game on I didn't turn the game on I guess that would help Hang on. Here it is, a nice little trade. The person I traded got what they wanted, I got what I wanted, and a pretty good deal on it too. So but I want to get what I want! <laughs> <laughs> that comes later. Yeah! Okay. It's, it's, it's on fire. What happened? Whoa. Lots of smoke. Well, that's bad. Yeah, well, thanks for watching. <laughs> When you take care of people, people take care of you in this community. That's the truth. So everyone, please remember that. Even if we're competitors, we're not enemies.